We love our nostalgia, don't we? We wear it on our t-shirts. We're just big fans. So when movies come along and they, they introduce characters that we grew up with long ago from our childhood, we look and we say, I remember, I remember that. I remember that. The member berries are strong. And with Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, they're taking those member berries in both hands and forcing them down our throats to the point where not only we don't want it anymore, not only are we full, but frankly, we don't even like the taste anymore. Let's talk about Ghostbusters Frozen Franchise. Skidded a subscribe. That was my subscribe song. Please do that now. I'll wait. Thank you. All right, this movie's not good. I went in with virtually no idea what to expect. I thought the trailers looked fascinating. I thought they looked a lot better than the previous one, Ghostbusters Afterlife, which head scratchingly a lot of people really liked. I shouldn't say head scratchingly. I know why they liked it. When Ghostbusters Afterlife came out, I think people were just so happy that it wasn't the 2016 movie again. They were ready and willing to champion and get behind anything that movie was gonna throw at us. We had that iconic Ecto-1 car back. We had the original cast, most of them, coming back to tip the hat. We had the Stranger Things kid in this thing. Ben Wolfhard's in this, and a bunch of younger generations holding the packs, ready to take on ghosts. And for the most part, it was a, a watchable, kind of dull, boring thing. <laughs> a lot of people liked it. I did not care for it very much. I didn't outright hate it, but I was, I, I found it kind of insulting and, and very pandering. And, and I really thought the plot was terrible. I thought the storyline was awful. And turning it into a drama when it was such a fun comedy classic back in the day felt like the wrong way to go. So when Frozen Empire was showcased and it looked like it was going to be more serious but fun, I thought, all right, I'm seeing a lot of comedy here. I'm seeing the Ghostbusters back again. It's going to focus more on the new generation, less on the old timers. Although I see Ray in the trailer. I see Peter's back again. They're handing Bill Murray, I guess, truckloads of cash at this point to suck it up and go into these Ghostbusters films that he avoided for like 30 years. And we even have Annie Potts suiting up. How fun. I thought, from the trailer, then I saw the movie. So I went with a buddy who really liked Ghostbusters Afterlife and he hated this. I don't know honestly why this felt pretty on par to the last one, but for him, he just really liked Gozer coming back and all the member berries from the previous one. And I didn't, I didn't like any of that. So this introducing a new character, new lore, new obstacles, that stuff was good to me. I thought, yes, finally we're doing something new. But just as Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom showed us, just as Star Wars The Last Jedi showed some of us, it's so much easier to do it once when you just followed the same exact playbook and use the same characters and locations as it is to make something new and unique. And so when Ghostbusters Frozen franchise has to do it, I think it falls on its face. McKenna Grace is the spotlight character, Phoebe, the main protagonist in this. And I really like this actress. I think she's cute as a button. She's very likable. And they kind of use her in the worst way possible. They make her not unlikable, but they make her just a sad sack for most of the movie. And obviously it's part of the character in the storyline, but it's just not fun to watch. And I'm often finding myself a little annoyed that they're spending so much time with her and this little subplot that's going on, which I thought was horrible. And the fact that it plays in even to the larger storyline just made it all the worse. Kamal Nujani's in this. I really like this actor as well. And I was on the fence with him in the film. A lot of the comedy's coming from him. Most of those jokes, I think, land. He's just really good with his timing. But freaking A, this character gets dumb as crap too. So many of these concepts just fall flat or are just downright stupid, in my opinion. Like, why are the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Babies back again? They didn't make sense in the last film. They absolutely don't make sense in this one. Ray Stantz dreamed the Destructor to be the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man in the first movie. That was out of his mind. That's why it was conjured up by Gozer. Why are there little baby versions? It has, it may, because it's just stupid. They're now gremlins. They're little gremlins that just run around like, ah, buy us at the store. Don't. 
Do I think this is a horrible movie? I don't. I don't think it's terrible. I think it's just kind of whatever. Like, I just don't care at all. I thought, I really did think they were going to get this one right for me. I thought it was going to be a lot funnier. I thought the dialogue was going to be witty. And I don't know. I guess I thought they would bust ghosts. Because it's the Ghostbusters. I kept thinking back to Malcolm's question in the original Jurassic Park going, uh, uh, now, now you do actually plan on having dinosaurs in your dinosaur park, right? That's how I felt about this. You do actually plan on busting ghosts in this Ghostbusters movie, right? The first act had me. The first 30 minutes I thought was really solid. It had the right tone. It had a good pace. We saw the Ghostbusters out on pursuit. It was a fun high-speed chase in the Ecto-1. And then it all just keeps falling on its face over and over again as more and more plot points and characters are introduced. Half of them don't conclude properly at all. There's things introduced that are just forgotten about. Visually speaking, it looks good. I think it looks really good. And I guess that's what bothers me more than anything is these recent Ghostbusters movies have a fantastic look to them. The sound design is solid. There is some atmosphere there at times, but they refuse to push further with it. They play it safe or they just go in these odd directions with the storyline that make me scratch my head. I will do a spoiler review on this one because I have a ton to say and I just don't want to ruin it here. Uh, so maybe look forward to that and, and think about subscribing if you want to hear those thoughts. If you're coming back again for the nostalgia, to see those old Ghostbusters again, to get some of those references to the original movie or the original two movies. Yeah, you'll get that. The, the original Ghostbusters are in there a little bit. Ray Stance has the most screen time, but I wouldn't say I got anything from that. They don't feel like the characters from the 80s because they're not the same actors from then. They're way older. They talk different. They don't have that same energy to them and the script is not written by the same guys. So it all just kind of falls flat. If you don't see a lot of movies and you want to get out with the family and see something, I don't think this is like horrible. I think you guys will probably have a good time. For me though, I'm just drained. I'm, I'm bored. I'm really just tired of it all. These remakes, these sequels, these rehashes over and over and over again. And there's so many more coming out because they're bankable. Well, there you have it. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. It exists. And those are my thoughts. Let me know if you have some. Put a comment below. Are you excited for this film? Did you see it already and you loved it or hated it? Please like the video, subscribe, let me know, I want to hear about it. All right, hopefully, I'll catch you next time. Take care.